No, Leo, that's too many balloons. You need to spread them out or else it's gonna look too busy. But it's the 4th of July. I don't think there could ever be enough red, white, and blue anything. Ugh, we've been arguing all day. Planning this party with you was a huge mistake. <laughs> You're telling me. You are so nitpicky. Nitpicky? I'm sorry that I want the party to look nice. Whatever. I'm gonna see if Maria and Olive wanna help me set things up the right way. Do me a favor and don't talk to me for the rest of the day. We need a break from each other. Whoa! I think I'll write him. No, he should be the one to write me first. It is the 4th of July, after all. A momentous day for the both of us. Goodness gracious me! No way! President Thomas Jefferson! <laughs> I think what my brother is trying to say is, Hello, nice to meet you, sir. My name is Layla, and this is my very excited little brother, Leo. We're from the future. Fascinating! Well, I am delighted to make your acquaintance. What brings you to the cabinet room here at my estate, Monticello? Actually, I have no idea. It's like the time travel app sent us here on its own, probably to learn something. One second, Layla and I are arguing about silly balloons for our 4th of July party. And the next thing we know, we're here. It's probably a good thing. Leo and I were getting on each other's nerves all day. You were quarreling? You have no idea. I felt like I couldn't do anything right. And Layla kept getting on my case for every little thing. That's because you weren't listening to me. Hmm. I believe I've determined the reason for your visit. I'm in the midst of a quarrel of my own with someone who is almost like a brother to me. A very stubborn man by the name of John Adams. Like President John Adams? Yes, the very one. He and I were very close, even though we disagreed on mostly all of our political views. Many things have led to the disintegration of our friendship, and we haven't spoken in years. That's sad. You don't think you can make up? Friends fight and make up all the time. That is true. Before your arrival, I was deliberating as to whether or not I should write him in an attempt to make amends. In our old age, we don't have much time to waste. <laughs> Perhaps I should set my grudge aside and begin a letter to my fellow founder on this glorious 4th of July, a day the both of us hold near and dear to our hearts. A letter will take way too long. I've got a better idea. Ah! What in tarnation was that? President Adams? Man, I really love this history app. My name is Leah. And this is my sister, Layla. We're visiting from the future. <laughs> the future? Well, could you send me back to the past? I was just about to sit down to a delicious meal Abigail had prepared for me at our family farm, when all of the sudden I'm transported to... Wait, where am I? You're in Monticello, President Thomas Jefferson's home in Virginia. Adams? Jefferson? <laughs> They're even worse than we are when we fight. Come on, fellas! One of you has got to make the first move and just talk out whatever's bugging you. You were How supposed you to be my most like trusted that? confidant. What you you committed the ultimate betrayal against someone who was supposed to be a friend. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Nothing's gonna get better if you just yell at each other. Leo's right. Let's try to get to the root of the issue, but one at a time. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Me first! Me first! Adams, I have always felt that you never truly valued or supported me. How could you possibly even say that? I was the one who asked you to write the Declaration of Independence, and your work was an absolute masterpiece. And then add to that our constant political disagreements. You, a Federalist, supporter of a strong national government, and me, a Republican, champion in states' rights. Of course we were bound to butt heads. Could you not understand why I was fearful of an all-powerful central government? Of course I understood, you Virginian swan. But couldn't you understand that a strong central government would have helped to ensure our young country's survival in the very beginning? How could you possibly deny that? Who are you calling a Virginian swan? You pigeon-livered poltroon? I have no idea what that means. 
But it sure doesn't sound good. Then, when I served as president after George Washington, my respect for you was so tremendous that I wanted to create a real partnership with you as my vice president. I wish you would have understood that working together would have been a great thing for our new nation. But instead, you undermined me at every turn! Bringing these two together might have been a bad idea. Have you also forgotten about your treachery when we ran against each other for the second time in the 1800 election? You hired that hornswoggler of a reporter to say horrible things about me. Ah, uh, all is fair in love and war, dear Adams. I was simply playing the campaign game, which worked. I won the presidency. But at what cost? You nearly destroyed my reputation! And then, you didn't even have the decency to stay for my inauguration! How unpresidential! Sulking and defeat is not becoming of you, Adams! You bet your powdered wig I didn't stay! I took the earliest stagecoach I could to get out of Washington and hightailed it home to Massachusetts! You actually thought I was going to stay and watch after all of your deception? You must have the brains of a cuckoo bird! Now, how about you making those last-minute appointments right before you left office? How could you select so many of my political enemies? Were you trying to sabotage me right from the start? Enemies? Justice John Marshall is your cousin and one of the fairest men to have ever walked this earth. I had to ensure that there were people who disagreed with you, so all your newly found power wouldn't make your head any bigger than it already was. What did you just say? You heard me. You take that back. I will not take that back. Fellas, fellas, this has gone on long enough. Sheesh! 100%. This ends right here. I'm gonna have you two do what our mother has us do when we argue. Say something nice about each other. President Jefferson, you first. <sighs> All right. I've always known you to be a brilliant lawyer, a great man to have political debates with. But above all else, you devoted your heart and soul to the cause of American independence. I have always admired you tremendously. That was really good. Now your turn, President Adams. I have always loved Jefferson and still love him. Don't say it to us, say it to President Jefferson. I love you, all right? You are the most brilliant man I have ever known, and I profoundly miss our friendship. Very few people share what we've experienced, declaring independence, the founding of this amazing country. Deep down, our ideals were very much aligned. It's a shame that we let our differences get in the way of what has always united us, the deep love of our nation. Don't you see? Both of you have more in common than you realize. What unites you is bigger than what divides you. That's right! Together you've accomplished so many great things, our country would have been lost without you. Now, can we shake on it and call it a truce? Come on, you guys! Don't be such babies! I'm so sorry, Johnny! Me too, Tommy! <laughs> Let's promise to never fight again! <laughs> it's a promise, dear friend. <laughs> I'm sorry too, Leo. I shouldn't have been so picky. When we get home, you put up all the decorations you want, okay? Thanks, Layla. I'm sorry too. I think we were forgetting the bigger picture. <laughs> we forgot too. Thank you, children for reminding us what is really important. That we might have our political differences, but above all else, we are American. And super proud to be, especially on the 4th of July. Thank you, President Adams and President Jefferson, not just for helping me and Leo solve our problem, but for all your hard work in founding the nation we're so lucky to call home. Oh, children, get over here. Group hug. Happy, Happy 4th, 4th of July, July everybody! everybody. If you like time traveling with Leo and Layla, watch more of their adventures at PragerUKids.com. And parents, don't forget to subscribe.